I think we move on, because our next speaker, Professor Sonia Blanford, is a real polymath. She's a music teacher, she's been a Dean of Education, a Pro Vice Chancellor in the University, but most importantly this morning, she's the founder and chief executive of a national charity committed to three, we've all heard about the three R's, I like this, the three A's, aspiration, access and achievement. Sonia Blanford. Thank you very much, and thank you for inviting me along today. Actually, there's one part of the introduction about me that's missing. I'm a parent. I'm a parent of two adopted children. The oldest is 15 and the youngest is 11, and they both come from homes, obviously, that had problems, which is why we adopted them. They are both absolutely wonderful. They're the best two girls in the world. I'm completely biased. I'm their mum. Um, but the challenge that, was, that has been referred to in terms of the emotional resilience, the emotional uh, um, hardship that they'd experienced before they came into the family and that they carry on with, it carries on with them, we live in our family on a day-to-day -day basis. So I think in my, in my uh, polymath, I think the personal of being a, a mum of two adopted girls is, is absolutely central to, to the work that we do. Uh, also, uh, just to say that Achievement for All, which is the, the programme that I'm going to talk about, we are working with Place to Be, and we do value the partnership with Place to Be and the way that Place to Be works with other organisations. And I think that's an important message with the new code of practice coming on board, with the experience of the work that's happening in our schools um, with Achievement for All. It is about the partnerships, that that works, that that can work together because it's not one programme, it's how we build the, the effectiveness of several programmes working together. You've heard different component parts um, in the previous two speakers. So, achievement for all. What we're doing here is placing a high value on education for every single pupil in every single classroom, in every single school. We're placing that value because over the decades and decades, there has been the notion from Secretaries of State that 80% is okay. To achieve the 80% is, is the, the, the number. And the focus of Achievement for is very much on the 20% that perhaps haven't had the focus, not in all schools, but in, in, in some of the statements policy-wise, but also in terms of practice in schools over decades. Our vision is a world in which all vulnerable and disadvantaged children and young people can develop their skills, interests and capability <coughs> to achieve. That that comes with inside them that gives them the opportunity to be successful. And it is about success. Why do we do this? Well, we've heard some examples already. Well, we know the jobs market is challenging and particularly those who have special educational needs, the vulnerable and disadvantaged. Two years ago, uh, two and a bit years ago, the summer of the riots, 66% of those people that had participated in the riots had, uh, when they were at school, been identified as having special educational needs. There's a real overlap between some of the social impact when they leave school and what happens during school when they have these needs. What we're also addressing is the long tail of failure. Unfortunately, a few weeks ago, we had that announcement about the English of Maths. It is true that in this country, we've had a long, 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 long tail of those pupils, those students, who've been unable to succeed at GCSE. Already been referred to in terms of the 48% of all prisoners are at or below expected levels their reading age is actually that of an 11-year-old or below, and 65% in numeracy and 82% in, in writing. So what chance do they have? What chance would you have if you're not literate, you're not numerate? And what chance would you have if you didn't have that resilience inside you? So I'm just going to go the right way. We have one ambassador. We haven't been going as long as a uh, place to be, and uh, we have one ambassador. It's Henry Winkler, the Fonz. And he has a really good saying. He says, every child has greatness inside them. We need to help dig it out and give it to the world. Every child. If you were to shine a light on every single child that you come across, whether that's in school or in society, and you ask the question, can they succeed? The answer is, every child can succeed. Every single child. So we're about improving results in reading, writing, maths for children, 
particularly those with special educational needs, those claiming FSM, free school meals, and those in terms of looked after children. The figures for looked after children are dreadful. And obviously, given my context, my personal context, I keep an eye on this. There is a one in nine chance of a look, looked after child succeeding in school. That is just to get the basics in literacy and numeracy. It does beg the question, why do they get up in the morning and go to school? Only a one in nine chance of success. So we're based on the belief that leaders, teachers, wider professionals, parents and the pupils themselves come together. So it's the leaders, the teachers, the wider professionals, the parents or carers and the wider professionals coming together. Absolutely rooted in a framework that works in partnership with schools. Leadership. Leadership, they're not all like Simon. I wish we could just put him somewhere and grow lots of Simons. They're not all like that like Simons in school. They're not all like you coming and listening and participating. They're not. Because they have the day-to-day, -day, that's not being critical because leadership is incredibly challenging. I've been a deputy head in a, uh, in a secondary school in Bristol in the city centre. I have experienced those, those challenges. I understand the difficulties of working and having that sharp focus on access, aspiration and achievement. Simon referred to teaching and learning. This isn't something that happens in isolation. The real focus on teaching and learning, and that's the real focus of achievement for all. But above all else, it's about partnerships with parents and carers. And if you go to the code of practice that's been referred to, chapter six of that speaks of the work that Achievement for All has been doing. We're now into our fifth year. The work of Achievement for All in engaging parents and carers, even the most hard to reach, which is a dreadful phrase, isn't it? Hard to reach. It's actually, they're frightened to come in. That's the real phrase. They're frightened to come into school. Even those parents that are, that are at the school gate, frightened to come in, whether they're in their onesie or a baseball cap or whatever, it's those parents that we work with. Um, and it's just wider outcomes, attendance, behaviour, and behaviour in the biggest sense. I sometimes say that the reason that we've been successful at Achievement for All is that we've changed the behaviour of the teachers and the leaders. So therefore, we've changed the behaviours of the pupils by changing their approach. And it is about emotional resilience. It is about emotional understanding. It is about understanding that when a child arrives late for school, there might be 101 reasons. A reason that I was um, witness to a few weeks ago in a school in Coventry was because that child's mum works all night, not in the local factory, but she is a lady of the night. And that child, in order to come into school, this is a 14, 15 year old, has to take his younger brother and younger sister to school and all the challenges that brings, and he arrives late. He arrives late. So the worst thing that can happen to that child when he arrives, a 15 year old, is to say, you're late, you're going to go into the late book. What should be saying is, fantastic, you're here, let me show you to the classroom, let me help you. And that's exactly what this school does in Coventry. And the school that I'm talking about is Ling Hall, and their um, five A to Cs have gone from, which is not the only measure, I appreciate that, but their five A to Cs have gone from 33% to 92% in the last four, four and a half years working with Achievement for All. So, to close the attainment gap, because ultimately it is about success and it is about attainment, there is a real emphasis on leadership, teaching and learning. Yes, a relevant curriculum. I absolutely agree and applaud Simon's comments that it's not just about having 11 GCSEs or having the 11 subjects on the curriculum from 9 o'clock on a Monday morning to 4 o'clock on a Friday. There's so much more that we can do to enhance the life of these children. Having high expectations, so not ha what happens in some schools is if you have a child walks in who's identified with special educational needs, vulnerable disadvantage, the teachers say, oh well, they're not going to succeed, oh well, they'll get to level two, oh well, they might get one GCSE. It's actually taking it by, by gripping on to the, to the expectation to raise the expectations for every single child. Because until we do that, we'll never reach the 100%. And above all else, having the wider opportunities for all children, which have been referred to by the previous two, two speakers. But we have to fundamentally, fundamentally have aspirations. What's that? That's the can do. That's every single person in the school, 
from the head teacher through to the person who comes in perhaps part-time and cle cleans the school, everybody has an idea that what they're doing there is to raise aspirations. The whole community is behind it. To remove the, uh, the barriers to learning. And I don't mean curriculum barriers, and I don't mean heating barriers in the school. I don't mean resources in that way. I mean the barriers that are in people's heads to learning. I can't learn. I can't do. I am unable to achieve. And that's where Place to Be is really going to help enhance the work, further enhance the work that we're doing with Achievement for All. And then you get achievement. So aspiration, as I say, is about the can-do, the mentality, the inside, the feeling inside. So in order to do that, You've actually got to take the child to a place where they have succeed, success, where they do know what it is to achieve, and that they do understand what it is to learn, to think, because that's what learning is, it's thinking. So they absolutely understand what it is to think. So they meet the challenges, whether on a daily basis, weekly basis, but it's every child learning in every single classroom. And the responsibility of that is every teacher for every single lesson, every single day, every single week, every single year. It's everybody's responsibility. And we know success breeds success. So from within the child. Having the high expectations about what they can achieve. It could be playing a musical instrument. It could be another example, another school this time on the south coast. We started with Achievement for All, a, an activities club on a Saturday morning. That activities club began with cycling because they all wanted to ride a bike. And a significant number of these children, this is a secondary school, couldn't ride a bike. The children came along. Four years later, one of those children is now in the British Junior Cycling Team. That wouldn't have happened if somebody hadn't have said, come along, have fun, enjoy learning, enjoy, do enjoy doing. Not only that, in the two years, the first two years of that child riding his bike, he then went from being level one to the elusive level four at key stage two in English maths and science. So really improved because he knew what it was to, to succeed. So it's about the attitudes and parental aspiration, not as Simon said about Simon Cowell, you know, I'm going to sing, I'm going to dance, I'm going to be a performer, I'm going to be famous, and whatever comes my way, I will grasp. It's actually about learning. It's about breaking down those barriers that prevent them from learning, making sure that the school will provide the pen, pencil, ruler, rubber, making sure the school will actually ensure that every child is in the classroom, making sure that the, the, the teachers understand some of that emotional resilience that's needed that I won't repeat uh, because other people have said it, making sure that there is that understanding. And it's focusing on behaviour, but not behaviour in the discipline sense, but the behaviours, understanding what comes from within and what needs to happen, participation in school life. So how many of you have teams that have the same pupils in the netball team, the football team, the hockey team? It's the same pupils. And you look at the 20% identified with special educational needs. Are they in that team? Are they participating? As a music teacher, and I still teach music every Friday, as a music teacher, I have an open door policy. I ensure that those that want to join, and we have had in some of the schools I've been working in, literally every child learning a musical instrument. Yes, they're all at different levels. Yes, they have different capabilities. But they're all performing. They're all participating. And it's that sense of belonging that really is needed. Parents participating. We have a, 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 an example of a, a, a parent who wore their baseball cap, the one I was referring to earlier, stood at the school gate through um, their engagement with Achievement for All, that parent is now the chair of the school PTA. What difference does that make to their family life? What difference does it make to that parent, that self-belief, that inner, inner sense of achievement? And it's about being, a, being able to develop a relationship with others. So what's the result of this? Um, our results for the last uh, academic, previous academic year in 11-12, uh, we have, uh, when compared to the uh, national results for special educational needs, uh, our outcomes are 50% above national outcomes. Our outcomes for GCSE in English and Maths 
and the whole school improvement is 30%, 37% above outcomes for the rest of the school population. So it does make a difference. It makes a huge, huge difference to what is happening in terms of success. But above all else, it's about having that positive culture in our schools for children with special educational needs and identifying what I said earlier about the 100% being able to succeed. So through Achievement for All, that emphasis on partnership, working school to school, working by building on each other's experience and identifying strengths within the whole system. So we work in developing effective teams within schools, between schools and with wider services, with health, education and social services. Really, really making the difference. I feel as if I'm like the... <laughs> <laughs> I feel like going, yes, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's not behind me. It's not a pantomime. It's here. Anyway. Um, so, in terms of, um, and I won't sing you a song because you'd all leave. Anyway, it's all about getting everybody to work together. And one of the, the really positive things that's happening with the code of practice is that instead of three buses arriving when there's a problem, there's going to be one bus, and it'll be a single bus that has all the services together, those that are needed. Um, but in the past, there's been education services coming at one point, then health services, then there's been care services. It's now really, really emphasising the need to bring that together. And what Achievement for All can do is help in developing that. And we have a, an Are We Ready campaign uh, which we are engaging with uh, place to be ensuring that we are ready. So what have we done in terms of parent engagement? We're now up to a million pupils across the, the country. We're up to 70,000 almost parents and carers. The improvements with the parents, the relationship, and by improvement I mean they participate, they feel valued, they experience school not as they experienced it, but how we would like them to experience school. They experience, experience school, this is the parents, as a place for learning for themselves. Example, Nottinghamshire Minor, um, a guy called Minty, so I can say his name because he's on our site, we've got all these permissions. Um, he unfortunately lost the use of his legs in a mining incident. He couldn't read, came to school through Achievement for All, he's now reading, and he's a teaching assistant. Really, and that, again, the, the, the difference that that makes. We are the quiet revolution. There's other revolutions that are happening in education. Achievement for all is quite quiet, but it happens nonetheless. We're in nearly 2,000 schools across the country. We're also, uh, we've been invited and we've spoken uh, with the, uh, in New York. Uh, the New York City uh, are working on Achievement for All. Uh, we've got uh, a, a, a regional, what we call a regional centre there. We're working in Oslo because of the unfortunate events in Oslo in the last few years. Uh, socially, we're helping uh, in Norway at Achievement for All. We're also in Latvia and Lith Lithuania. We only like cold places. <laughs> okay. Uh, we've also, we're working in early year settings because it begins from birth. And the code of practice is now going to be 0 to 25, from birth to 25. We're also working uh, because of the um, success, but also because of the need. We're working in um, further education set settings from January. I've told you the, uh, the, the, the range, actually I will go back to that, because it is about leadership as well. So we have over 9,000 school leaders that we've worked with um, in our 2,000 schools, that's the heads, the deputies and the wider group. And we do ask them to participate as equals. So our leadership programme is about engaging with the school champions. It's ensuring that there's the partnership. We don't do two schools, we do with which is why we value the partnership with place to be because they're the same. It's doing with schools. Really important, that. Um, I'm an academic, so um, not only do I read them, Simon, I write them. Um, so I've written a book called Achievement for All, three A's, and uh, very, very uh, pleased with some of the reviews. A guy called Charles Deforge, who's a professor from Exeter, he was head of the uh, Social Economic Social Research Council um, for teaching and learning, and his words are, this is about achievement for all. This book is the story of a game changer, a must read for all school leaders. 
It should also be considered a must-do for any school leader who have yet to match the student gains shown here. So the value of, of Place to Be is self-evident. The value of the partnership with Achievement for All should also be self-evident because it is about bringing together that which works, that which enables every single student, every single pupil, every single day, every single week, every single year to succeed. Thank you for listening. I promised you at the beginning that you were going to be here three speakers, all of whom spoke with real authority and passion about this subject. And I don't think, I think you'd agree with me that all three of our speakers fully fulfilled that promise.